All right, before we dig into the wet and slimy of it here, make sure you download the free guide in the description box. It's gonna be a great resource for you moving forward. And if you're a Humble Growth regular and you always download my free guides, then you can just add this one to your library of guides. I think we're at like 21 free guides I have available at humblegrowthhydroponics.com. So go download them all if you want. So when we discuss root rot in a hydroponic garden, we're really only talking about one particular culprit, Pythium. This is a fungus-like organism and it thrives in oxygen-deprived, little warmer environments like hydroponic gardens. Identifying Pythium from the top of the plant just by looking at the leaves can be pretty tough. However, if we keep an eye on our roots, there are some really easy telltale signs of Pythium dropping in zoospores and they're finding new hosts on your roots. So in this video, I wanna break down identification, treatment, and prevention. So when it comes to identifying root rot, there are three stages that are really easy to identify. We just need to be paying attention to our roots. The first sign is you're gonna to begin to see your roots clump and stick together. So this will happen even if your roots are white. It doesn't matter the quality of your roots at this point. If the inside of your garden is the perfect condition for root rot, then it will grow no matter what the condition of your roots are. So as these zoospores begin to multiply and grow on our roots, the root rot begins to devour the roots. In the next stage, the roots are gonna to begin to develop a gooey, clear, or milky white outer film as the root structure is being eaten by the young zoospores. And during this stage is when you're gonna to start to see the browning occur. You see, as the roots become incapable of osmosis or the movement of water through the plant, because they're literally and physically blocked by the oppressive root rot, the plant's transpiration pool is slowed to a near stop. And at this point, you will start to see noticeable signs in your leaves, as well as significant browning and decaying of your roots. Your leaves will begin oddly curling in on themselves and wrinkling up in strange ways as they use what's available in their cellular structure to survive. In other words, your plant's consuming itself for nutrients. Now, it gets real. The next stage is gonna be rapid. Just a few day, very fast decline of your plant. Because once the transpiration pool is cut off, photosynthesis is no longer happening. Chlorophyll is being devoured as well as all of the glucose and the sugars within the leaves for the plant's survival. And without photosynthesis happening and no movement within the plant, it's basically doing no good. So everything is just dying and decaying very quickly. If you see your plant at this stage and then you look into the chamber and your roots are brown, they've clumped together, they've kind of grown as one weird, nasty, gnarled organism, that is root rot in its final stage. So now I'm gonna get into some things that we can do if we notice root rot in these first two stages and wanna to try to save our plant and turn it around. What we're gonna do is create a bath of one part hydrogen peroxide, 3% food grade, and two parts water. And then we're gonna soak the roots of the infected plant in that mix for anywhere between seven to 15 minutes, depending on the severity of the case. You'll start to see the bubbles break away and the root structure kind of come back to its original form. Be really careful not to over dilute the water because the, the hydrogen peroxide can't actually burn and completely kill the roots too. All right, next, before we put it back into the garden, it's important that we make sure that we completely change out the water in the garden and clean it out as much as we possibly can. We're also gonna add 15 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide, food grade, for every gallon of water we have in our nutrient reservoir. This is gonna help to keep things clean. It doesn't sanitize, but what it does is adds more oxygen and also creates more difficult surfaces for root rot to stick to because the constantly popping bubbles make it really hard for the bacteria to actually get latched onto the roots. So this is a procedure that you're gonna to wanna to do every four to six days, because once the extra O leaves that H2O2, then it's just H2O, which is just water. So we need to make sure we're constantly adding more H2O2 to add that extra oxygen to our tank. And a lot of times, if you see this kind of goo, this film start to appear, then it also means that you're gonna to need to do a more thorough sanitation of your hydroponic garden. There are a lot of different products you can use to sanitize your garden. You can just use citric acid. You can even use light bleach and make sure you completely clean it with water. So then once your reservoir is nice and clean, you have new fresh nutrient water in there, then you can put your plant back in and keep a close eye on it because what could happen is that plant could affect other plants if there still is spores on it. All right, lastly, prevention. What can we do to keep root rot out of our garden? What does it need to thrive? Let's talk about those things so we know what we can make sure it doesn't have. To thrive, root rot needs low oxygen and 
warmer temperature environment. So if we can make sure our garden doesn't have both of those elements, then we should be maintaining a pretty safe environment to not get root rot. A way that we can add more oxygen to our water is through adding that hydrogen peroxide that I just mentioned. That's a really, really great preventative measure to keep extra oxygen in that water as well as, like I said, those bubbles keep things clean. If you live somewhere where you notice it is really hard to keep your water temperature down below 80 degrees, then I recommend changing out your nutrient reservoir more frequently. You know, topping off your garden and changing it out with larger amounts of water that are colder uh, will help to, to fight off pythium, because it really does need stability in an environment that's gonna maintain a higher temperature and maintain lower oxygen to thrive. If you introduce higher oxygen and a cooler temperature, then it just can't survive. So let's just make sure that we're keeping our gardens under 80 degrees and we're adding that hydrogen peroxide at least every four to six days. Download that guide. And while you're there, check out the 21 other guides that I offer right now on homegrowthhydroponics.com, unless this video is old and you're watching it, in which case I probably have like a hundred guides over there. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. Let's grow together.